what's up you guys, Century Productions here, and welcome to the Watchtower series. If you're new here, this is just basically a deep dive of my toy photography. I kind of walk you through some of my setups, how I light all the figures, how I pose the figures, all that stuff. Uh, and I just got off of taking about 30 G.I. Joe shots. I kind of switched up my style a lot. I desaturated a lot of my uh, my shots and I just used a lot of different uh, settings than I normally would use so I'm getting back into my you know original style my comic book kind of style with this spider-man figure right here I think this thing is awesome this is the Marvel Legends amazing friends three-pack version and he's got a really awesome custom John Romita head on there uh, so I'm kind of getting back into shooting these more colorful setups kind of comic book style type of uh, vibes. Uh, so John Romita, which is probably one of the most well-known comic book artists and Spider-Man artists in particular, along with Steve Ditko. Uh, and he kind of had his own style when drawing Spider-Man. He had a lot of say on like the costume and uh, a lot of the, the story over the years. And I think this is probably a lot of people's favorite comic book style of Spider-Man, especially with this iconic head. Uh, I was gifted this by Diego, who goes by Black underscore Symbiote. He's a, a great friend of mine. I've known him for a very long time. Uh, he runs the Grind Group on Facebook, which I'm also a moderator for, which is basically uh, also a deep dive on your toy photography and where you can get a lot of tips. So if you're getting into toy photography, the Grind on Facebook, it's a, a brother group of ACBA. It's a really great place to kind of just uh, you know, throw your setups on there and get feedback in real time from a lot of the best photographers in the game. And Diego kind of created that, and with the help of uh, at Spider underscore Machine, who I believe was the sculptor for this and painted it and all that stuff. Uh, I mean, uh, they just really came up with an awesome head sculpt here. I mean, you will definitely not see a better John Romita head sculpt on the market for Marvel Legends and Mofex figures. Uh, so I just got to uh, give the kudos to those guys. I mean, they just really knocked it out of the park here. And I'm having a lot of fun shooting this thing. Now, like I said, I was having a lot of trouble. Um, or like I said, I've, I've been kind of trying to get back into my old style. And... Uh, I don't know, a lot of stuff was going wrong with this <laughs> with this setup. I had lights falling over, I had the setup falling over. This uh, figure was like kind of uh, falling out of the window. Uh, I was just having all kinds of trouble. This is the NECA diorama, this little diorama right here. And typically, if you guys see this window to the left, it has this bar that goes right through the window, but I cut it out uh, uh, a while back. Uh, because there was a lot of setups I was noticing that I wanted to utilize a window, but that bar was kind of getting in the way. So uh, I was able to pull this back out and have him kind of, you know, etching out of the, the, the frame of the window right here. Or kind of leaning forward out of the frame. And uh, I think it looks pretty cool. This was based off of a little panel I saw from one of John Romita's um, uh, splash pages. I don't think I have the image anymore, unfortunately. It was just something I saw in passing. I was like, oh, I bet you I could probably do that pose. Uh, and then I kind of threw a crazy Dutch angle on it. I lit the sky behind it. Just a very straightforward Spider-Man shot. Nothing too crazy, just a really cool pose. Him coming out of the window, basically just, you know, he just threw on his costume. He's like, oh, time to go, you know, help some people. You know, just Spider-Man shit. So uh, let me show you a different angle. All right, so you can see a little bit more of this setup. Uh, I just basically got like just part of the diorama. This usually has like two levels and there's like a lot more of these panels. I have two of these sets, so it kind of comes in handy when I want to do like a larger display. Uh, but I just have just the pieces I need, you know, just the side, just the front. I got the Mezco Superman box holding up this, uh, the top of the roof here. If you can tell, I have the roof flipped upside down because I'm shooting upwards at this shot and I don't want to see any of this stuff. I'd rather see the top of the roof because it just looks a little more streamlined. So work with that. There's all kinds of lights in here. I got a light that's pointing outside of this window so it lights up. There's another light uh, pointing at this part right here which is going to be our background that's inside the window. You know we got to make sure we cover all our bases. Uh, we don't just want some random shit in the background when we're looking through the window because you know uh, your focal point is uh, this actual uh, figure and you're gonna see everything in and around that area so we want to make sure that the background kind of looks you know like something that you would see inside of a room lots of lights we got a light right here that's doing a majority of the work 
shining directly on Spider-Man. We got this light right here, which is kind of doing a little bit of rim lighting on the top. We've got these two softer lights, these three actually. These two are Loom Cube and Panel Minis. That one's the Ulanzi Garage Kit. Softer lights, they hit the figure, especially when we're working with very low settings. I think my settings on this were, I think my f-stop was at 3.2 and my shutter speed was at 1 over 60, I believe. Uh, and then my uh, ISO was, I think, 125. Uh, I try to work with very low settings, so we get this really cool focal on his focal point on his head, and kind of everything else around it is blurred. But you can still make out all the details and everything. So, yeah, this is my little Spider-Man shot. I'm trying to think of another setup to put him in because I really like this head sculpt, and I love the John Romita art, and I'm trying to kind of capture the essence of that uh, with these little Spider-Man shots. So let's check this one out. All right, so I got a little, uh, another little Spider-Man shot set up here. Still using the Marvel Legends Amazing Friends Spider-Man body and that really cool custom uh, Romita head. And uh, I think I got this idea from Spider-Man the Animated Series. Uh, you know, even though like I'm not really doing any animated type shots, uh, I still, you know, draw a lot of inspiration from a lot of different places and. Uh, you know, got this scorpion here. This is the retro scorpion. I think this is the first time I'm shooting it. This might be the first time I'm ever shooting a scorpion figure in general. Uh, but I've always thought uh, Matt Garden was such a cool character, and uh, I thought it'd be kind of cool, you know, uh, by taking these shots to do some with some of Spidey's greatest villains, and uh, you know, more uh, specifically, uh, villains that I personally have never shot. So, uh, kind of got scorpion on the roof. This is pulled directly from a episode. You know, the animated series is very simple, but I think that was kind of the beauty of it. That's what made it such a, a fun show to watch. Uh, so I wanted to keep this shot very simple. I just wanted the two characters in frame. I was working on Spider-Man's pose. I've actually had him in this pose on my desk for like a couple days now. I thought it was so cool. So I kind of built an idea around it, and then I was watching the animated series. And, you know, one thing led to another. Uh, got uh, Scorpion in kind of this crouching kind of pose. I initially wanted him on his hands, but um, this figure doesn't really allow that. It's just not as poseable as, as it is. It could be more poseable. Um, so I just got the tail kind of up. He's going to be out of focus. Spider-Man's going to be in focus. Apology for the shaky cam. I'm kind of on a really thin tripod here, so the camera might be swaying a little bit. Uh, and yeah, so just basically, uh, just to show you guys more of this setup, Got him on top of a Mezco Superman box. And then this uh, this little uh, um, rooftop thing is from the NECA diorama. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we think it's a full rooftop, but it's really just a section. I'm only putting in frame when I really need to. And if you can kind of tell by that sidewalk back there, uh, you know, when it's put in a frame, it looks like a full sidewalk, but you know, looking at it just from here, you can tell it's just two little pieces of sidewalk. Which also, by the way, I think some people are going to be like, what? This picture makes no sense. How would the angle of the building going this way and then the sidewalk going that way work? I don't know. Hopefully no one <laughs> brings it up. Uh, but yeah, working with a little base right here uh, that's got a manhole cover that says NYC. That just was like kind of a happy accident. Needed a big space to, to shoot this on with this angle. Works out very nice. And uh, yeah, up the saturation, uh, it's kind of nice working with colors. Again, I did a whole month of G.I. Joe shots where I was just desaturating everything, so it's nice to kind of bring a little bit of that color back. Uh, you know, it brings a little bit of warmth back to my soul as well. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much this whole shot. We got this huge soft box right here that's providing light for the whole setup. I got a couple of Ulanzis strategically placed around. I think I got one over there, and then of course there's another one right here that's pointing at the scorpion, just making sure everything's kind of evenly lit. Um, I also have all of the lights, with the exception of this one that's pointing at scorpion on its right side. They're all coming from the left side, so that the shadow on the ground isn't coming from different angles. You know, that there's one light source that's really pushing everything um, to the right, uh, just to make more sense in the physical world. Uh, so yeah, my little, another little Spider-Man shot, got a couple more planned. Alright, so I was skimming some John Romita Spider-Man comics. I think I was skimming his his first Spider-Man works, which I think was like 56 to like 70 something, and I think in like issue 72 or something, I came across this little panel of Spider-Man swinging through New York, 
and I don't know, I just really liked the pose, so I was just playing around with uh, my Spider-Man here with the custom head, of course, as you know, the last two shots have shown. And uh, I just kind of did the pose, and I had these little spaghetti webs that I got way back in the day from my buddy Greg. And uh, I don't know, I just kind of threw something together really quick. Uh, I'm currently shooting this in the morning before I have work. I don't ever really do this, but I don't know, I thought maybe it would be a good little challenge to see if I could throw up the glass, tack Spider-Man to the glass, put a cool background behind it, and shoot it before I went to work. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty cool. I got him tacked directly on glass. There's a piece of glass back here. Um, and then I have all these crazy, like, you know, New York City backgrounds and just comic book backgrounds that I just basically hoard and I pull directly from comics and I just basically hold on to them for situations like this where maybe one of these little backgrounds would come in pretty handy. And of course we got New York City with St. Patrick's Cathedral behind there, um, with this kind of yellowy sunset kind of vibe, um, and I think it just works really well. Tried to kind of match the, light, the lighting the best I could. Um, worked with a lot of soft lights for, for Spider-Man here. Um, with a kind of low f-stop, I think a 5.0. Um, but yeah, this kind of worked out pretty good. You can kind of see the reflections in the glass of these lights right here. Of course, I got two panel minis by Loom Cube. Those are the, the soft lights I was talking about. Of course, I got a couple lights that are lighting up that background back there. He's only probably about eight inches away from the background. And of course, you gotta remember these are 11 by 17, so very tight restrictions as far as the framing goes. So as you can see right here, the framing doesn't really make much sense, but when I kinda you know, tighten it up, it'll make a lot more sense. So yeah, this is my quick little John Romita swinging kind of shot. Uh, you know, when I was browsing those John Romita comics, I noticed that he has uh, Spider-Man wall crawling a lot, which of course is one of Spider-Man's biggest traits is he can climb up the wall like a spider, but John Romita really like went hard on that aspect, and I think I'm going to try to come up with some kind of wall crawling uh, shot. Uh, but yeah, very colorful, uh, love John Romita's art, I mean, just fantastic. I know a lot of people aren't fans of... Uh, John Romita Jr.'s art, but he's also one of my favorites, so kind of like e when either of them draw Spider-Man, I'm always in, so uh, yeah, let's, uh, I guess I can just pull this back just a little bit so you guys can get a better idea. Got the glass right there, got all the lights right there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are the two lights. This is, uh, this is the whole setup. Very, very, uh, very small, not that crazy, so let's check this out. All right, so, you know, just playing with my toys, man. Just playing with my toys. I got Doc Ock out. I don't really shoot Doc Ock all that often. Uh, you know, they've come out with a couple versions. I think three different versions so far from Hasbro. They came out with this one, which came in the, uh, the Spider Wave, uh, you know, the mech suit spider. And then uh, they had a two-pack with Silk, and then they just came out with the animated uh, version of Doc Ock, which I think is the, the best one. But if we're talking about John Romita, and you know, trying to kind of em emulate his style, we're gonna want to use this Doc Ock now. I thought if I used the new Doc Ock tentacles, they would all fit in the back of him, but uh, I kind of remembered as I was trying it that the only the top two ports in the back of this Doc Ock work with the new tentacles. The bottom two ports don't fit them for some weird reason, or maybe it's just my copy. I'm not 100% sure, but I wasn't gonna force them in. I didn't want to ruin the tentacles, so the top tentacles are the original ones that came with Doc Ock. And these two bottom ones are the ones that uh, came with the new animated Doc Ock. And I just kind of made it work. I kind of have them kind of, you know, all facing towards the sky with Doc Ock kind of angry, kind of looking for Spider-Man, even though he's literally right there. Uh, and then, of course, I have uh, my little uh, John Romina Spider-Man, which, I, you know, me playing with it over the last couple days, I've really come to enjoy this figure. I mean, this is based off of the Amazing Fantasy 15 figure or version. And uh, that's, I, this is like starting to slowly become my, my new favorite Spider-Man to shoot. Uh, but he's got a little bit of tack on the on his back, and that's sticking him to this really nice little rooftop dial. Uh, I got this from BTA DBS uh, on Instagram. If you guys know him, he makes really cool dioramas, a lot of animated style dioramas. I bought these from him a long time ago. I don't really shoot them all that often, but they kind of like fit the John Romita style pretty well. So. I like that. I was thinking about what to use for the background. 
looking at a lot of John Romita's artwork, you notice that he has a lot of yellow or blue backgrounds, just plain color backgrounds. So I knew with a kind of a larger setup like this, you know, we're covering a lot of ground here. It's a very tall setup. It's probably about a foot tall. Uh, I knew I needed to use a utilize a full poster board for this. So pulled out one of my blues, and instead of making it lighting it so it's one plain, evenly lit color, I decided to throw a gradient in there, kind of throw a little bit of my spin on it and it creates this really nice little gradient where it's very light at the bottom and as you go closer to the top it gets darker and darker. I think it's very appealing to the eye, I think that's the reason I went that route, but yeah, not really too crazy of a setup. Uh, I initially wanted to have this Doc Ock climbing the building, but dude, this thing just <laughs> doesn't work with this Doc Ock, unfortunately. Maybe I can get that done with the new Doc Ock. Um, the animated version, and of course they came out with the new uh, Spider-Man No Way Home version, which is really cool as well, so maybe I'll play around with those Doc Ocks, but this is going to be my little John Romita uh, Doc Ock Spider-Man shot, so yeah, let's check it out. Alright, so I just took a Dr. Octopus shot. I was trying to like interchange the uh, tentacles and realize that it doesn't really work on the older Doc Ock, but I was messing around with this figure. This is the Spider-Man animated series, Dr. Octopus, Doc Ock, whatever you want to call him. And man, dude, I really like this figure, but it's also really frustrating like trying to get him posed just right with the tentacles. I mean, you can make him stand fairly easily, but it's still, you gotta work for it. So you really gotta work to get there. So I kind of just spent posing him probably like an hour just trying to get him in this cool position. And then I was gonna do a daytime shot with just him in the water tower. This is a was a, like a little custom kind of project for my buddy uh, Bever Clever on Instagram, and uh, uh, he kind of painted it up. And it just kind of I don't know. It doesn't really fit like super good with animated kind of style stuff, but uh, I think it's a cool enough prop to just throw in there anyways. And like I said, it's just gonna be Doc Ock, and I was just gonna have a sky background, but it didn't work. So I kind of flipped it and decided to do night. I got these cutouts right here that I've just had for a long time and I knew they'd work for like sh the shadows of uh, buildings in the distance. So kind of going for like almost like a Batman the Animated Series kind of style but with a spin on it for Spider-Man the Animated Series. Does that make sense? I kind of have the spotlight effect on both of these guys, you know. I know this is a night scene, but they're very well lit, you know, and that's kind of reminiscent of how animations were, you know, around that time period in the 90s. Even though it was night, you know, they still were really nicely lit, so. Uh, but anyways, I didn't even talk about the Spider-Man. I've been taking all these Spider-Man shots, and I was just going to take a Doc Ock shot, but I was like, I could probably sneak him in on the... Um, on the, the water tower there, so this shot's kind of like all over the place. Animated series Doc Ock, we got the Romita Spider-Man in a Batman the Animated Series kind of style. I thought that was fun. Alright, so a lot of lights here, using the big uh, softbox right here. Just works really nice with, uh, you know, kind of nighttime scenes. It, you know, it lights a lot of stuff if I'm kind of trying to do like this spotlight kind of uh, lighting like I was mentioning. Um, you know, working with the little rooftop dial, got the water tower, we got the lights, we got the cutouts in the back, just a single piece of blue, dark blue, uh, poster board back there, it's like 24 by 18, I, I, I don't know the exact, or no, 24 by 36, and uh, dark blue, got a, all the lights hitting the background coming from the bottom, so it gives this kind of gradient type of feel going up, and then, uh, uh, you know, got the two separate light sources, one for Doc Ock, one right here for the Spider-Man, Got both of these lights right here, kind of pointing up towards the rooftop right here. Got some backlighting going on right here. Pretty straightforward, man. Just a lot of lights, kind of just all kind of put in certain places to achieve certain different effects. One for the, you know, the back creating that gradient, one for the two little spotlights. You know, nighttime, I like to always hit uh, my figures with some um, backlighting or side lighting. And then, you know, you can't forget your props and everything. You got the bottom of this rooftop that needs to be lit so you can see that as well. Uh, so we got two dedicated lights down here that are lighting just that. So yeah, that is the whole shot. I definitely am liking this one, this shot more than the other Doc Ock shot. Um, but I still, I still kind of like that one as well though. Let's check this out.
All right, so here's my little finale for this whole uh, Romita Spider-Man run I've been doing uh, with these shots. You know, thinking back on John Romita and, you know, his work with Spider-Man, I think he started around number 39, taking over for Steve Ditko, and then, he, you know, really started making his mark uh, in some of the later issues. I mean, he's probably the most well-known Spider-Man artist uh, other than Steve Ditko. And, uh, you know, he's faced off all, against all kinds of villains uh, over the years. I think number 66 and 67 had some really epic John Romita Spider-Man and Mysterio artwork. So I pulled out this little cutout that I took. Um, this is a picture I took and then blew up uh, on an 11 by 17 and actually turned it into a cutout. I've had this um, cutout for like almost two years now, so I've never used it. And you know, when I was taking all these uh, John Romita Spider-Man shots with the custom head sculpt, uh, uh, you know, I was thinking about, oh, I got that, that Mysterio hand cutout, so. Uh, it was pretty fun to kind of throw this into a shot. This was the initial idea. I got the broken wall over here, hands kind of coming through. You know, Mysterio does all kinds of, you know, size alteration type of things on Spider-Man, especially in like issue number 66 uh, of Amazing Spider-Man. And so it got me thinking. I was like, him breaking through the wall. I made this little diorama a long time ago, probably like a year or two back. Uh, I don't really make dioramas, but um, this one I'm, you know, a little proud of. It looks pretty good. Uh, I got some debris, got the little rocks, got the pieces of concrete. I know if he had actually smashed through this wall, the concrete would be broken up a little bit uh, differently, but you know, amateur diorama maker, so we're just going to work with what we got. Wanted to get Spider-Man in kind of like a helpless stance. You know, this whole run we've been taking with all these Spider-Man shots, Spider-Man has yet to kick anyone's ass. If anything, he's the one like running from the fights most of the time. Which, you know, Spider-Man, always be doing Spider-Man things, you know, fight back, sometimes he runs away, yeah. Uh, so, I guess that's just what happened with this little run, but, uh, kind of want him in a helpless stance, you know, Mysterio kind of blowing himself up, making himself very big, who knows if this is even real. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of a fun little shot, uh, you know, lots of little debris, it's a pretty big setup. Um, I got this big, uh, big, uh, base right here and the wall. I mean, it's pretty huge. Uh, something I don't normally do, I'd usually just throw a cutout back here, but I have these little buildings I made a, a, a while back. They're just made out of cardboard and a printed, uh, face of a building on it. They kind of, if you just kind of sneak them back there, they kind of work pretty good for a building that's going to all be out of focus anyways. All right, so here's the behind the scenes of the behind the scenes, uh, you know, uh, kind of got like this section right here with everything that's going on. I've just got the Mysterio cutout uh, tacked to a Yu-Gi-Oh tin. If you guys have been watching these videos for a while, you know, I used sometimes for my setups, I'd just you'd be using some random shit, and that's a Yu-Gi-Oh tin full of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, pretty much all worthless in there, very old Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but it's very heavy. The tin is very durable. I kind of thrash those around using them for setups and, and everything. Uh, so he's just tacked directly on there with plumber's tack, a lot of plumber's tack. Even though it does look like he's touching the ground, that little tip right there, um, he is actually being held up with that tack. So uh, I wish I could have put more of the Mysterio arm through the wall. Uh, it's a little bit too big for the hole, as you can see. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, but um, I think it works for, for uh, pretty good the way it is. Um, plus, if I was able to get his arm any further out, I think it just would have been too big uh, to really uh, to take the whole shot and get everything uh, kind of contained. Uh, so yeah, we got lots of lights. Um, we got the little garage kit that's pointing at the back side of that cutout. Uh, this one right here. We got, of course, a light right here and a light up here to focus solely on the background. Uh, you can see I kind of got some Loom Cube panel minis right here, one for the front of Spider-Man. Right here, you probably can't see it, but it, it's just a little out of frame. This one, give him a little bit of backlighting. Uh, this one right here, that's kind of lighting up the majority of the scene. And then we just kind of put little odds and ends in the back there, you know, to kind of fill in gaps so you couldn't see any of the background fully. Um, you know, broken wall pieces, little rocks kind of scattered about. Uh, you know, if a concrete wall did in fact kind of break apart. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, this was a pretty fun little run of shots. John Romita Spider-Man, probably my favorite Spider-Man. 
Uh, and I don't really shoot Spider-Man all that often. I've been, kind of been focusing on, you know, Joes or like Superman or other Marvel characters. So it's always fun to get back to Spider-Man and shoot some Spider-Man stuff. Um, I mean, he's just he's one of the greatest characters of all time. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a, leave a like, subscribe. If you guys got any feedback for me below, please put it in the comments. Or if you got, you know, an idea for a future episode or just... Let me know what you guys are thinking about these videos. I, I really appreciate all your feedback. So this is Century Productions, and let's check out this shot, man. Catch you guys later.